Hello, my name is Oleg Borzin, and I'm a fellow of technology and architecture at the office of the CTO um, at Equinix. I will be presenting uh, this project um, that's called Complex Infrastructure Design and Multi-Domain Orchestration, uh, in which we're using Edge Multi-Cloud Orchestrator and um, ONAP uh, Controller Design Studio. This project has been developed uh, under the Linux Foundation Edge Akraina Public Cloud Edge Interface Blueprint in collaboration with Arna Networks. And I'd like to also present um, uh, some key contributors from Arna, Vivek Muthakrishnan, architect, and then uh, Kavitha Papana, member of technical staff who collaborated in the development and um, uh, implementation of this, uh, of this project. The agenda for today's presentation, uh, we'll go over the motivation behind this uh, project. What is um, uh, going on in the public cloud edge interface and what use cases we're pursuing. We'll go over the uh, software uh, integration architecture between ONAP uh, controller de design studio and the implementation of a Terraform um, uh, executor that, that allows us to automatically run Terraform uh, plans uh, as part of the orchestration workflow. And then we will uh, conclude with the demo of the infrastructure design and multi-domain orchestration. As far as motivation for this project, we observe uh, some key industry trends uh, that are evident in the market. The first one is that often uh, today, public cloud uh, is providing the edge computing capabilities. And we have examples of AWS Outposts, uh, Anthos, um, IBM Cloud Satellite, which requires some integration between uh, the public cloud infrastructure itself and the edge resources. In some cases, this integration is completely provided by public cloud, which is coupled, what we call a coupled model, like an AWS Outpost. In some cases, um, the integration is partial, where hardware is orchestrated separately from the uh, virtualization layer, and then you know the application is right on top. But we need to figure out you know how to deal with uh, with this with this trend. This trend also um, kind of highlights the nature of most practical deployments um, of the edge infrastructure is hybrid, meaning that the um, hardware for the infrastructure could be edge infrastructure could be provided as uh, independent hardware, but you know virtualization layer like for example Google Anthos uh, could be provided from the cloud. So, you know, in this case, we, we, we really need to, uh, we're dealing with multiple domains uh, at the edge and in the core. And we're also um, understand that, you know, they, they have to interwork and coexist together, which leads to the need for this multi-domain interworking. And in that case, um, each domain, for example, in the edge cloud, in the interconnection fabric, in the core cloud, you know, there are different APIs to so different provisioning methods, including CLI. And, and you know, that makes the deployments uh, time consuming and complex, right? And also um, we basically need some sort of an orchestrator that would understand all of this uh, and, and, and leverage some common denominator uh, for the infra infrastructure, for both the infrastructure enablement and the application deployment. Uh, and in this case, we see a great uh, role that Terraform and uh, Kubernetes and Helm could, could play in this, uh, in this area. Uh, in addition, since this is all multi-domain, and then we are talking about the need to interconnect the edge to the cloud, federate edges, and that uh, reliable and performant interconnection is required for the solution. Uh, in addition, uh, because of this infrastructure uh, is uh, targeted for uh, new applications, developer-centric capabilities are required. The ability to integrate both the infrastructure design, the infrastructure um, provisioning and application deployment with uh, CI-CD environments is, is one of the key requirements in our project. Um, to transition a little bit to how it relates to the uh, uh, Linux Foundation Edge Akraina Blueprint, um, the overall context for this is what we call Public Cloud Edge Interface Blueprint under the Akraina Linux Foundation Edge. The purpose of this blueprint is to develop a set of open APIs orchestration functionalities, and also edge capabilities for enabling multi-domain interworking across uh, domains that we define in this picture. So we basically want, want to see um, interworking across the uh, operator network edge domain. So this, this allows access to 4G, 5G network, to fixed networks, the uh, public cloud edge and core domain. So in this case, um, according to what we're seeing in the industry, 
uh, certain public cloud capabilities, although they're topologically split between public cloud core and public cloud edge, they're still linked or coupled together um, anywhere from the hardware to virtualization to application and services layers. So we need to be able to, be, to, to orchestrate that. In addition, we recognize that not all edge applications are provided by public cloud. So therefore we wanna have a solution that is also uniform across all of these domains for the third party edge uh, applications. Uh, in addition, uh, we, we also kind of um, recognize that all of these domains do not just hang in the air. They, they, they are located in certain data center facilities distributed around the, 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 the geographies, right? And interconnected by network providers or by interconnection providers. We also developed uh, a set of terminology that you see on the screen uh, referring to public cloud core as PCC, public cloud edge specifically that, that has a relationship to public cloud core either on virtualization or application services or even you know, throughout the hardware layers. We refer to that as public cloud edge. Third party edge is anything that's provided by uh, third party independent uh, from public cloud. And then the operator network edge is the resources provided by the mobile network operators. This could be a user plane function. It could be a radio access network. It could be a combination, combination of things. Um, so in uh, release five of uh, Ukraine PCAI, we developed this uh, architecture slash uh, implement, uh, reference implementation where you see on the screen, we, we separate entities or we, we, we define these entities in, in the architecture. So we start from the, um, Right hand side in blue, this, these are developers, developers or developers and architects that, that provide uh, infrastructure as code, uh, for example, templates like Terraform plans that could be executed against public clouds, against the edge infrastructure, against uh, bare metal clouds or edge clouds and against the inter interconnect providers. And uh, in addition, we have uh, other capabilities where um, the developers could, or architects could actually include other things like um, Helm charts for the application deployments uh, or and, and um, things like uh, identification of or uh, you know, uh, where the edge clusters, for example, Kubernetes or OpenStack uh, clusters exist. Right? In the pink uh, up top is the is the orchestration layer. So this sometimes we refer to it as the uh, PCI enabler, sometimes as the multi-domain orchestrator, but those terms are interchangeable. So this layer provides um, API handling, exposes APIs, um, uh, provides the API handling capabilities like the uh, accept API calls from high layer um, uh, constructs. And you'll see that in the demo where we have a software layer uh, that we call infrastructure design studio that enables um, us to develop the or design the um, topology and then use those API calls to tell the orchestrator what to do. Uh, the orchestrator then uh, would, would basically pull um, through its Git integration, will pull the appropriate uh, um, Terraform plans or appropriate uh, information uh, from, uh, from Git and start executing the, the workflow based on uh, prescribed um, uh, topology and prescribed design, right? So in, in, the, in the orchestrator, we see uh, things like uh, um, the ability to invoke Terraform to enable um, infrastructure provision in, in the public cloud core. In the demo, you'll see how we do it with Azure. Uh, we have the ability to actually access uh, uh, edge cloud resources in the edge data centers. In this case, we use Equinix uh, bare metal cloud, uh, which is called Equinix Metal, to actually bring up uh, servers and, and install Kubernetes. And then we use uh, interconnection um, to the public clouds between the edge um, clouds that is enabling um, uh, connectivity between um, edge cloud and public core clouds for both the control and management of the application and, and for in, in, um, transferring some, some of the data. Uh, on the um, uh, left-hand side, you see operators. So operators provide the networking capabilities. In, in our demo, you'll see the ability uh, to connect an um, IoT device to, to 4G, 5G network and to actually you know, pass data through to the edge, uh, application running at the edge and the edge infrastructure deployed through this method and then process this data and you know, publish the results over the interconnection to the, to the, to the public cloud. In overall, the, the public cloud edge interface uh, on, on the right-hand side, you see the capabilities that I just described, but we actually provide northbound APIs for um, 
Git integration, dynamic cluster registration, application deployment, uh, uh, and automation of, of, of deployment of the application instances. In addition, we also provide APIs and capabilities to run Terraform as the main engine to kind of provide a uniform uh, capability to um, orchestrate the provisioning of the infrastructure across all of these domains. Right. And um, uh, as far as the edge, we, we, we demonstrate here the, the ability to uh, interoperate with Kubernetes, but we also tried OpenStack and um, um, we, we have plans for deploying the you know, 5G functions in the same manner as, as uh, other applications based on Helm charts that are provided by the developers. So uh, this diagram shows both the architecture, the integration architecture, but also it's, it's how we do what we do in the demo. So if you, if you look at the, across the bottom, you know, from, um, uh, from left to right, uh, we have a UE uh, attached to the 5G network that is then uh, uh, interconnected to this edge cloud. And an edge cloud is provided by Equinix Metal. In an edge cloud, we have uh, edge infrastructure and basically bare metal resources that we will bring up and orchestrate. Part of that orchestration will involve uh, the deployment of the Kubernetes cluster itself all across the bottom. Then later on, we'll deploy the composite application on top of the um, uh, Kubernetes cluster, but also with the ability to uh, provide for some BGP routing uh, in order to connect back to cloud. But, uh, further moving to the, uh, to the right, we have the interconnecting fabric. So in our case, uh, for this demonstration, we have the public cloud edge or um, edge cloud is in the Dallas region, right? And then the public cloud core, where the, um, in, in this case, we use Azure cloud and private interconnect to it uh, through Equinix fabric across, uh, in, 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 across the US, right? And then uh, we terminate that in a private uh, express route um, uh, circuit within Azure, within the Azure cloud. We build private peering so that that private, um, uh, circuit could uh, provide for connectivity to the edge, all the way to the edge cloud and all the way to the pod uh, application pod resources. And within the Azure cloud, we instantiate um, uh, an IoT hub, IoT infrastructure, and also for testing a test VM connected to VNet. So all of this is built using, using the orchestration up top. But starting, you know, before this can be built, if you, uh, if I can draw your attention to the top of the picture, we actually provide a, what we call the infrastructure design studio, where we define, you know, the user logs in, defines the topology based on the requirements. For example, selects the edge cloud, selects the core cloud, understands the latency requirements in between the two, uh, pr provides for authenticated parameters and, and user input uh, in order to bootstrap this, um, uh, this, um, orchestration, right? With this uh, in the GitHub uh, we, or in GitLabs, we have uh, a repo that uh, holds the um, uh, Terraform plans or templates of what we need to uh, want to happen in, in, in the Azure cloud, in the interconnection and how we deal with the Equinix, uh, for example, bare metal service, uh, Equinix Metal. So all of this is uh, parameterized and defined in the Terraform templates or Terraform plans. We also have Helm charts that are responsible for defining the actual applications that you see in the Edge Kubernetes cluster that's called Azure IoT Edge, all the pods, all the authentication parameters, um, custom resource definition, plus the BGP routing that's provided by Cube Router in this case as an example. Right? And we also store our cluster configs once we deploy this bare metal and install Kubernetes on top, where we actually uh, load the, um, uh, we actually grab the uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, config file and put it in, in, into the uh, Git repository so that the orchestrator can, be, can onboard uh, the cluster resource into its uh, cluster registry, right? So once the infrastructure design is completed, um, based on, 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 on the desired topology and relationships between uh, core cloud, interconnect and, and edge cloud, we execute the, um, the two, two, two actions. We, we provision the infrastructure first. So we basically start with um, uh, invoking the Terraform plans uh, uh, under the hood that actually uh, build the edge cloud by bringing up the Equinix bare metal server. Uh, like I said, installing um, Kubernetes on it and, and preparing it for the connectivity. 
then you know we, we do infrastructure provision in the in Azure Cloud. So we basically uh, build Express Route. We build all of the uh, software components here for peering, uh, gateway, VNet, all of that stuff is 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 been built by Terraform. And then we'll link uh, the Edge Cloud to the Core Cloud with the Equinix Fabric by also using Terraform and building the virtual connectivity across. Right. Obviously, all of this infrastructure, underlying physical infrastructure, is is in place. But the big point here is that all of those infrastructure components are actually exposing Terraform providers, so that orchestrators like the one shown here up top, uh, that's called multi-domain orchestrator, can take advantage of it. Right. Then the MCO part, Edge Multi-Cloud Orchestrator of the uh, orchestration layer will be able to actually deploy the applications uh, based on the uh, Northbound API call will trigger the actual application deployment, which is the Azure IoT Edge uh, based on Helm charts uh, stored in the Git repo and basically putting the, put in that application in the, um, on, on, the, on the Edge server. But once this application deploys uh, based on the information provided in the Northbound API calls, it will authenticate back to the Azure Cloud. Uh, stand in the pods will um, uh, will um, uh, start running, and then you know we'll 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 see the ability to actually send end to end send the IoT data in the low power um, uh, IoT format, uh, compressed data or encoded data for latency for um, temperature. Um, air pressure and humidity uh, in the compressed format, we will send this to the edge application. Edge application will process this data and publish results to the cloud based on this, uh, based on this infrastructure. So the orchestration workflow is uh, uh, kind of defined here in the um, workflow um, uh, blueprint that is implemented in, in under the CDS controller design studio on, uh, as, as part of the ONAP component and as part of this uh, orchestration uh, project, right? So we have uh, uh, um, actions that are responsible for the infrastructure uh, provisioning, we, for connectivity, for deployment of the edge infrastructure, for provisioning the, uh, Kubernetes cluster into the orchestrator, onboarding the, the cluster itself, de 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 defining the service based on the, um, and, and the composite application based on the health charts, and then actually deploying, sorry, and then actually deploying this application uh, onto the edge, edge cluster. So for the demo, uh, we're actually doing, you know, th this actions that I've um, uh, outlined, right? And we really, uh, kind of show in, in our project that we deploy MCO 2.0, which has become a new uh, Linux Foundation networking project. We add CDS uh, Controller Design Studio and install Controller uh, Blueprint archives in order to be to implement those things like uh, Terraform, Helm chart processing, um, cluster registration, application deployments, and so forth. Um, based on you, you know on, on th this information is actually stored in Git, so we'll show you. Uh, where the Terraform plants are stored, um, what they look like for Azure, for Equinix Interconnect, for Equinix Metal, uh, what the application Helm charts do, um, how the cluster info is also stored. And we basically, you know, design this infrastructure in the, um, in the design, um, uh, infrastructure design studio. So we, we pretty much topologically build uh, the edge cloud, the public cloud, the interconnect, and we trigger provisioning of this infrastructure with uh, API calls that are uh, that are happening uh, in the background, uh, you know, based on this uh, interaction between CDS and Terraform, to to bring up bare metal servers, to install Kubernetes, to activate uh, uh, provision infrastructure in Azure like Express Route, Peering, VNet, VM, and IoT Hub, and then we connect the edge and and and, and core uh, with the Equinix fabric. And after that, once the infrastructure provision step is complete, we actually deploy the end-to-end, -end, um, the, the, the public cloud edge application, which is Azure IoT Edge. And we do that by dynamically registering the edge Kubernetes cluster to MCO. We are onboard the Helm charts to the MCO and then deploy this application. And the last step in the demo is end-to-end -end verification. So at this point, I will provision, I will uh, transition to the demo and we'll show you the 
um, the, 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 the video of the, uh, of the demonstration. At this point, I would like to transition to the demo. What you see in front of you is the um, is the uh, Git repository for the for this project. So we, in in this repository, we store the various um, templates, um, uh, including the uh, the actual code for the for the CDS blueprints. Then we um, you know we have in the repository a um, uh, collection of uh, templates, like I said, we have the cluster config uh, file itself that we basically um, pushed uh, into the repository after, after the deployment of the um, Kubernetes cluster on the edge compute. You'll see it later in the steps. We have the Kubernetes Helm charts right for the application deployments and the Terraform plans um, also stored here. For example, if we look at the template uh, Terraform plan that we use for Azure, we can look at the uh, structure here and look at the actual um, syntax of the of the resources and connections and all of this is uh, real information with the IP addresses you see later on being deployed uh, into the infrastructure. So um, at this point, we will log in into our infrastructure design studio. So uh, at, uh, at the, it allows us to create topologies, right? First, we create a new topology where we name it um, public cloud edge interface, uh, just to um, be in line with our, with our project. Here we have the, um, uh, the description we can put in and then pick the edge location, which happens to be in the Equinix data center in Dallas, right? And the uh, PCC location, which is US West uh, um, uh, Azure. So here we specify various parameters that we need. For example, the um, operating system we need for the, for the edge uh, node, the VLANs for the interconnection, uh, the type of server that we need, and then what we need is in terms of the express route and identification in Azure, like the connectivity 50 megabits per second. We have the express route circuit name, resource group, and BGP parameters that will be used later on to link the uh, uh, Azure core and the edge. At this point, our topology is ready. So we can click on, for example, interconnection and add uh, specific parameters uh, that are required for um, uh, interconnect fabric. For example, the port names, the uh, VLAN IDs for interconnection, uh, primary and secondary, as well as where we send the notification. So at this point, uh, our interconnection uh, topology is sort of primed, right? And uh, you know, we are deploying the, um, the infrastructure. Um, what's happening under the hood is that this uh, software front end is now sending uh, API calls uh, to uh, CDS and CDS is starting the workflows, retrieving um, uh, Terraform plans and other parameters from Git and executing the, uh, the flows. So at this point, we, you know, just take a look under the hood, what's going on. Like I said, the Terraform is executing. And what we're seeing here is the view from the Equinix uh, Metal portal where the, this Edge server in Dallas has been created. So you see it's going through its uh, uh, provisioning and boot sequence. And at this point, the server is up and running. We can SSH to it. So we see um, we can get to, to it from public IP address, but we also assign private IP address. We see the server um, characteristics. Also, we'll look at the network uh, that was created, including the VLAN for um, local networking within the Equinix Metal Fabric, but also connected to the global interconnection fabric uh, uh, through the port and um, a connection we specified for the Fabric VLAN 543. So at this point, uh, let's see if we can um, SSH to the server, right? So we get the SSH access information just to see that the server is up and then the um, uh, the Kubernetes has been deployed and uh, uh, things like that. So we SSH to we SSH to the server. Um, we see that the um, uh, it has interfaces. It has the correct IP addressing on the. Uh, um, uh, on its interfaces and the routing information that we specified, you know, for for connectivity to to Azure. 
So also checking the uh, availability, uh, you know, the, the, the actual Kubernetes cluster has come, come up, right? So we see just the system pods, nothing else is running right now on, 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 this, um, on this server. So at this point, our um, uh, cluster on the edge compute server is up and we can show the, um, the config file for that cluster that uh, the, the orchestration has already um, imported into the uh, cluster registry in the, uh, in the EMCO um, orchestrator. All right, so at this point, uh, we'll also look at what's going on in Azure, right? So the, the orchestrator is continuing its work in terms of creating the infrastructure. So what's, what's happening right now is that um, the express route circuit within Azure has to be created. And we see this is uh, coming up right now. It's not yet fully provisioned, right? So the Terraform plan started executing against, against Azure and it has to create the um, express route circuit. Uh, and uh, the private peering within the circuit. But you know, we'll also look at the uh, interconnection fabric, what's happening inside the interconnection fabric where those connections are actually created. So you see these two connections on VLAN 542 and 543. So look at the VLAN 543 is our primary VLAN and we're making right now the, the, um, the, the orchestrator is uh, triggering the connectivity within Equinix. Once this is done, we should see that the express route circuit has been provisioned. And now um, the orchestration flow transitions into creating private, uh, private peering, BGP. So um, with this, uh, we also confirm that uh, the circuits are fully operational back at the, at the Equinix, um, Equinix fabric. So right now they are uh, there, but they're pending BGP, complete BGP configuration. So we have one side provisioned, which is in Azure, but the other side on the edge um, uh, server hasn't been, hasn't been provisioned yet. But at this point we have the, uh, the circuit itself enabled and, and ready uh, um, to proceed with the BGP configuration. But for that, we need to uh, make sure that the, um, uh, application has been deployed, including the uh, cube router. So here in the um, MCO orchestrator, we see a composite application has been has been defined, which is uh, consists of three parts there. Um, and um, we'll look back at the cluster, right? So we'll see that no uh, application pods are yet running. So we're going to deploy this application at this point. Um, Using, um, uh, using user interface just to show how this is done. So we create a service instance, we uh, give it a version number, and then we will um, um, associate this uh, uh, application or service instance with the edge cluster, which we deployed in the, in the first step. So this application actually consists of three parts, the Azure uh, custom resource definition for IoT Edge, IoT Edge parts themselves and a cube router to compute the BGP connectivity to the um, Azure cloud. So we just triggered the application deployment. We see that the cube router pod is up and the uh, application IoT Edge um, pods are coming up as well uh, in the default namespace. So at this point, what, what is supposed to happen is that this application pods will use uh, um, this BGP connectivity between edge cloud and the core cloud to register with the um, uh, public cloud core IoT backend. So this is what was going on. So we deployed all of these pods, we deployed cube router, we initiated the BGP connection, and now we should see that BGP coming up. And for that, we go back to Azure, look at the um, route table under the private peering on that express route circuit. And what we should see there is the um, uh, uh, neighbor that should be established. So we'll, we see some of the uh, prefixes, right? So from the private um, uh, VNet and also from the uh, express route circuit. And if you look at the route table, we should see actually all the pod routes advertised uh, from the edge server right uh, through this express route connection orchestrated all the way into, into the VNet roundtable. And you see here 
pod um, uh, prefixes and also the vnet prefix that should be known back at the um, uh, edge. And then the edge server, we look at the st status on the cube router and we see that the peer with Azure has is, is been established and we see the routing table that's been propagated um, end to end. Um, at this point, we uh, we can look at the status of the um, BGP peer itself or BGP neighbor from the uh, from the edge server. So this is a uh, just for illustration purposes, we ran BGP using cube router, but this is, you know, there are other methods of how to, to do this. So we see that the neighbor has been established and we can ping between the edge um, server and in Dallas and Azure uh, cloud in Silicon Valley, you see latency is about, you know, between 30, 32 to 37 millisecond as we had on our um, topology definition uh, application. At this point, we can also look at the Azure. So there is a test VM that we've uh, uh, spun up just to be able to, um, uh, to look at the uh, uh, connectivity. So we are, um, we will confirm that we can reach between the test VM and the, um, and the um, uh, edge um, pod. So for, for this, edge pod is listening on this port 50,005. And we're opening a connection and we're just making sure that we have direct connectivity. Um, at this point, we will be able to, we should be able to send IoT messages from the IoT device itself. And for that, we have a uh, simulated uh, IoT client connected to the 5G network. Uh, it's running on a, um, on a device, right? That's connected to the 5G network in our case or 4G network. And um, so we see that uh, uh, we can send uh, messages to this port 50,005 from the IoT device on the access side of the network. So we're going to do that uh, to um, uh, to the IoT edge application running on the edge server. In this case, what we're seeing is that the client is sending uh, compressed IoT messages, right? So they are actually encoded. If you look at the um, at, at, at the sequence numbers and the PDU that is sent, this is encoded uh, temperature, pressure, and humidity information. And on the um, logs of the um, uh, application pod that's running on the edge server, we see, we see that it's been decoded, right? And also been published into the um, uh, Azure cloud in, in, into the IoT backend. So to, do, to verify that, we go to the IoT backend look at the IoT edge definition, and uh, uh, we see that uh, the shadow of this edge device that's running on the edge server in Dallas is, is reflected here, right? So we see uh, its status, its pods, right? And then we'll look at the um, metrics of um, received IoT messages that, that have been decoded by the edge and published to the, to the cloud. So to do this, we'll look at the metrics screen, and we'll look at um, the combined number of messages received. And uh, this, is, uh, this is where we are um, uh, at this point, receiving messages from the uh, uh, IoT Edge application all the way to the public cloud core through the infrastructure that we created. 